I'm back. <laughs> I'm so damn cringy. The current state of iRacing is somewhat of a weird, strange, and somewhat terrifying one at the moment. 2019 was set to kick off with a massive bang, as on December 19th, 2018, iRacing announced a 300,000 US dollar prize pool for all of their World Championship Series, from the E-NASCAR Pecani Freeze iRacing Series, uh, the Porsche Esports Super Cup, the VRS GT iRacing Championship, the World of Outlaws Sprint Series, all of a combined 300,000 US dollars which was a massive step forward at the time. Everyone had really high hopes, and it looked like the future was going to be extremely bright. The E-NASCAR Peak Antifreeze iRacing Series would pay out a 100k prize pool, as with the debuting Porsche iRacing World Championship, which controversially took over the iRacing World Championship Grand Prix Series, which many viewed to be the absolute pinnacle of road racing on the platform. The stage was clearly set for a big year in iRacing, and this doesn't even include the likes of the day-night cycle and, you know, the time of day updates that arrived in 2019 Season 1. The V7 tyre model would debut across multiple cars, and the updated and overhauled damage model on the Skip Barber to boot as well, but most importantly, that over-the-top flag marshal waving the flags. Poor flagman's having a hissy fit, they're gonna do a rotator cuff. <laughs> <laughs> So, the state of iRacing for 2019 seemed brilliant, right? Well, it does until we look forward to 2020. iRacing currently stands with no confirmed Road Racing World Championship Series for 2020. The VRS GT iRacing World Championship, which I felt had well and truly cemented its place as a series, was axed and will not be making a return for the new year. The Porsche Esports Super Cup was held to great fame in 2019, but although we near a month after the series' conclusion, and just 8 weeks away from the end of the year, we are still left in the dark regarding an official announcement of Season 2. The E-NASCAR series looks to grow in 2020 with a staggering 250000 US dollar prize pool up for grabs for that series alone, an increase of 150% in just 12 months. How can that at least be possibly bad news? Well, they're currently without title sponsorship if rumours hold true. A 10-year relationship between Peak and the Iris and NASCAR WCS series is ready for curtains now that the checkered flag has fallen on Zach Novak in the 2019 Homestead race. The Dirt World Championships appear to be the only one secure, but whilst that may be positive in theory, when you look at the viewership numbers of the USAC World Championship series, the series rarely gets over a thousand views after a month, including both live numbers and then the VOD replays. Round 1 kicked off with a 2.7k view, uh, viewership rate, which could be expected being the launch of a brand new championship. Next week though, it was 1,200 people less who tuned in, and a further 650 less people by Round 3. Iris's partnership with the VLN Championship in Germany also came to a close in 2019. Whilst this wasn't an issue that generated any major headlines, for myself this is one that hit quite hard due to my love of the series, despite my lack of participation in 2019. And at the end of the day, it's another partner gone to another platform, another opportunity for iRacing, gone. And I'm not the only one who thinks this either. On my Discord, I put it to some of you guys to tell me your thoughts on the current state of iRacing, and some of you were just straight out blunt. Daniel Benefield from Positive Sim Racing outright said it's shit. In all seriousness though, their focus is so high on their partnership with NASCAR that the roadside is getting tossed in the bin unless someone like Porsche or BMW are funding it. VRS GT is a perfect example when they obviously cut that series. Riley Blythe. In my opinion, there is a serious problem with iRacing failing to put in the adequate systems to properly legitimise their high level series. Having run for part of the 2018 Blancpain GT series, one of the problems that stuck out to me is that first, there was no in-race stewarding, and second, what stewarding there was consisted of a single person who was the primary steward of all the Dirt Oval WCS series at the same time. For a series with 5 figure prizes on the line, that is woefully inadequate. This also extends to special events, which seemingly always has a myriad of server issues, software bugs or simple failures to test, like the 44 incidents we had at the Spa 24 hours. Given these events are live streamed and effectively serve as big advertisements for iRacing like when Max Verstappen and Lando Norris, Beneke and I think it was Max Venig all teamed up for the Spa 24 hours, that was huge news. And yet, after that issue in the first server where they had 44 incidents, there was just no incident count in the second race, 
and they were just abusing track limits the entire time. And that was the race Max was in with all the viewership numbers. It was a terrible look. That was my thoughts. But now back to Riley. Um, it would go a long way for iRacing to actually put the necessary work into them that they could make to stand. Well, they could stand to make their money back if a good show drove a few people to subscribe. And a lot of people shared that view, with uh, Damon Mulqueen and Brad Wingard both sharing a fairly similar uh, view of it. With Brad saying that the thing that brought him to iRacing was V8 Online, the commentary, the graphics looked great, and that seeing the organisation behind it and learning about the shooting, etc., made him appreciate it more because of how terrible. The situation with iRacing is at the moment with how they support their events. The only positive thing I can really say right now is that exposure for the sport is continuing to grow which is great news, but I still feel as if iRacing is getting a few things wrong in a couple of places, not capitalising on the growth of the sport at all. Raceroom which two years ago was one of the most underused sims, almost no one was on Raceroom has been doing incredible things with their esports competitions and as a result, that platform has steadily increased in participation. F1 Esports has arguably nailed the esports platform the best at the moment with sim racing, with their format and as a result, if you ask many sim racers, an F1 Esports title is the most prestigious of them all currently, which, you know, gathers views, it means that drivers are promoting the series more, it's the one they're putting the most attention to, which have, again just drives viewers to tune in to see just how intense the racing is, because it is oh so close. So what exactly does iRacing need to do then? iRacing needs to remove some of its world championships in my opinion to kick things off. Make the remaining few more prestigious, make them more polished, make it so much harder to get into these series, because one of the issues right now is if you have a WCS for every category of car in iRacing, all of a sudden it becomes incredibly easy to make it in, and the black license or the pro license you receive doesn't feel special if there are 2,000 other people with one just like yours. It's not hard, it's not prestigious, it doesn't gain any viewership from having a big level event. At the same time, people will watch each series more if they do carry greater weight as the competition will be tighter due to less of a spread of drivers across multiple disciplines and the price pool for each could be increased as well without iRacing currently changing their budget. They're splitting that 300,000 US dollars in 2019 across so many different series. Imagine if they could target it just a little bit more and for those of you that might say a price pool doesn't matter, well not so much for the drivers or who forget or who gets it, of course they want it. But the marketing exposure that iRacing could do with having that huge prize pool would go a long way. I say this because the Le Mans Esports series really benefited in my opinion from a large prize pool being promoted, and in our commentary briefing before myself and Chris McCarthy opened up the broadcast, we were told to hype it up and mention it as often as we could that it's high stakes competition for money. On iRacing, in the feature races in the Word of Outlaw Sprint Car series or in the iRacing Rallycross series, you don't really get that same intensity which I feel would create a much more serious and intense feel which in turn would lure more people in to have a crack at the series themselves and buy an iRacing subscription or at the very least tune into the iRacing Esports Network. Which is... <laughs> but the subscription model I mean is another problem I'll be discussing in a future video because the barriers for entry into iRacing at the moment is extreme in itself. And most other esports titles from a Call of Duty, League of Legends, PUBG, whatever it might be, or Fortnite, they're all one-off payments for the game itself. Content in the game is always going to be paid for, and iRacing will never move away from the paid model content, that would be a dumb idea. But the subscription model they have to get the game itself, it's really, really gotta go. iRacing is not in a dire situation. But it's not in a healthy situation either as things stand and I really really do hope this can be fixed or addressed in the very near future. Season 1 2020 is fast approaching and iRacing need to announce some stuff ASAP, especially for the roadside, or else it just risks losing traction to its competitors and be left wheel spinning in the dust. And that's where I'm going to leave the video for now, I'd love to know some of your guys thoughts in the comment section down below iRacing is in a weird situation. I want to know what else some of you guys that aren't in my Discord, what you guys are thinking. But if you do want to get involved in my Discord, get your little comment put up on this uh, video as well. Be sure to join the Discord link down in the description as well as all my other social media. Be sure to give me a follow or subscribe on YouTube as well. Maybe a follow on Twitch. All would be really, really appreciated. But otherwise, guys, I am signing out of here. Catch you in the next one. Peace.